Today I'm going to do a little talk about chemical warfare. I'm not an expert, but I can tell you things that I've learned from um, having tanks over the last 15, or, uh, reef tanks over the last 15 years or so. Um, my kids are in the house, so it's going to be noisy. There's dogs barking and stuff, but um, my tank is really fluffy and happy right now, so you can kind of see what happens uh, with the chemical warfare that's going on between the corals easier. Um, you know, we get all excited. We set up our tanks, and we um, have bare rocks, and then get it all cycled, and then we go and pick out our corals and start moving them around. Oh, it's not happy here. We crack it off and move it to another spot, mess with the lights. We get everything kind of happy, and then you have to have a lot of patience, and, and things grow as long as you keep everything stable and balanced. And like um, that bouquet of trumpets started out as two or three little heads, you know, and it just grows um, from one or two little, you know, a little frag that we got from the, from the store. So, but once your tank is established, there's no more places to crack things off and move them as they start to fight, you know, that... They get bigger and bigger and bigger, and some get along and some don't. And this is some of the stuff that happens when things don't get along. Um, you can see that something's missing in my tank right now. If you watched my other videos, in this cave over here, I used to have a huge bouquet, a gorgeous bouquet of Pally's Grandis. And I noticed that, and my friend noticed that everything within two to three inches of that bouquet was starting to die. It was actually giving off chemicals into the water. This um, pink bouquet, uh, this used to be huge, of uh, this these pink pallies. My clownfish used to host it, and it has slowly gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and anything on these rocks has started to regress and die. So I took it out, and I gave it to my friend. I um, took a little bit off and put it in my other tank just in case I want to put another bouquet back in here, but I'm kind of enjoying having that little cave there to look through and I might get something different to put there but I'm, I'm thinking about that but anyways you know it got so big it started off as just two or three little heads and grew so big and beautiful but you know it was killing everything else in the vicinity quickly as it got bigger and bigger and I, I wasn't even noticing if you can kind of see there's like a, even a dent you know in this where the chemicals had and that's happy now I've taken it out about two weeks ago and it's kind of growing back but that was even regressing and that's one of my favorite coral so you know it's like you have to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to handle it so let's talk about a little bit about that today and um like we love mushrooms mushrooms are cheap they're gorgeous they pretty easy to take care of but they do take over and one of the reasons why I wanted to film right now is to show you what's happening to my recordias this whole side here used to be gorgeous and filled with huge recordias. And all of a sudden I noticed that one of my peaks, some of my peacocks, these blue purpley ones, were over here in the middle in between and I had, hadn't paid attention. And they had actually, I scraped them off and do you see these little baby recordias? Those were huge, just like these, just gorgeous huge. And they had gotten stung back until they just almost were non-existent. They're starting to grow back now that I um, scraped off and killed the purple uh, mushrooms that were there um, but you can see this red one is going to have to be nuked because look what it's doing to my recordia and hey I like my recordia is way better than my mushrooms they will eventually you wouldn't think mushrooms have such a big sting but they do and they can they can kill so many things um, they're nice to have but you need to know how to handle them and I can't just crack off my rec my recordias and move them there's no place to move anything so you have to learn how to handle things and so one way is with the mushrooms, I've learned is if you take a sharp scissors, you can either cut them back, um, kind of cut them off, or and then scrape where they were. I mean, if I have a bunch more red ones, so I don't mind killing, I hate to do it, but killing that big one. But I try and cut them off first and scrape them off the rock. And usually they just turn to a pile of mush. Then I take some Aptasia X that you use for Aptasia, and I drip some of that stuff where he was. And usually after two treatments, he's gone. And then these will recover. And I might have to do it to that green one too. It doesn't seem to be stinging him quite so so bad as that red one was but I just don't want that to happen again I enjoyed having that huge area of recordia there that was just so pretty and bubbly and big um, you can see that these two have gotten along fine they're both uh, posiliporas kind of grown into each other and seem to do fine but um, the this one over it the posilopora is actually killing the underside of that uh, bird of paradise uh, bird's nest and 
I don't know if you can see, but this stylophora, see that white spot up against the poslopora, it's actually killing that too. So I might either at some point trim off that whole half, the whole right half is one big branch, or I just might just let it go. And sometimes, you know, if it's not having any tissue regression that's spreading over my whole coral, I'll just leave it, I just let them duke it out. You know, and um, like see there, that lowest branch there on that bird of paradise is totally white. That's, I'm gonna have to trim that off. Um, so that disease doesn't take over my other other ones. But in like under here, see that white, that pretty pink um, stylophora, that whole bottom branch died because the, the um, pallies I was talking about that was right here was actually giving off chemicals and everything. The sponge was disappearing. Everything was just like not doing well in that whole area. So, um, you know, it is like these two pipe organs aren't getting along. That white one is taking over the daisy one, and I can't really do anything about it and crack it off. That daisy one, it's attached. So sometimes you just have to let them just duke it out and do what they're going to do. Um, I can show you another um, example of mushrooms and how powerful they are in my other tank. But anyways, that's just basically this tank and some of the um, chemical warfare that's going on and that you have to keep on top of people say why do I make such big water changes well because it really does takes a lot of that chemicals out of the water I do like a five gallon on this 20 gallon tank doing such a large uh, volume of water helps to get some of those fighting chemicals out of there that is is in there from uh, it's a very crowded tank and they're all vying for space and fighting and I have to keep things trimmed back sometimes I have to trim back um, these goobs gorgonian because they grow real long and sweepy and start sweeping against other stuff and killing it and or it will start to get ki you know killed in some branches if I can just nip them off if they're starting to touch something else I go ahead and do that and that's just part of maintenance and part of um, having a reef a small reef especially you know I don't spot feed my corals because I want them to grow slow um, eventually you're going to have a mess you know of, of huge corals you're going to have to figure out what to do with you know either let them duke it out and figure things out or break it off and go get something smaller for our tanks but let me show you though what happened in my 10 gallon recently okay i'm in my room with my my 10 gallon and you can see i've done some stuff in here too i scraped off all the uh pulsing zinnia that was on this side wall and I just, I'm just i just going to grow it on the back now so I glued some to a suction cup and then suction cupped it to the back and now it's growing all over the back wall and it's looking really good it's way bigger than it was but anyways to show you what the warfare that's going on in here um, you can see that kind of ugly circle brain coral now it's right in the middle of the screen well to the right of that and a little lower that thing it was green I don't even know what it was um, some kind of uh cup coral or something I don't know what it was is a very little bit of green on the back of it still but there was a big purple mushroom underneath there touching it and even though I got it off quick enough um, I noticed it was starting to kill the under edge of that and even though I got it off and killed it, it the chemicals were it was already done it already it started slowly spreading the death all the way across that until now there's just a little ring along the back of that you can see that's green and that kind of was happening over here as well see that shriveled up blue mushroom that's right in the middle of the screen right now and then the dead tissue on that pagoda coral um, I had noticed that it was touching that and killing and making the tissue regress I hope I got it in time I have not cut it off. I did put some Aptasia X on it just to see if that would be enough to kill it and, and destroy it, and it was not. It's shriveled up. It's not happy, but it will recover. So next time I do my maintenance of my tanks, I'm going to try and trim that off or scrape it off and put some more Aptasia X just on that. Now, I've used Aptasia X on Paleothoas before with success little ones and mushrooms. If I, you know, try and get most of the mushroom off first, um, there's that little hunk of grandest pallies. I don't know if I'm going to keep them. They're beautiful, but boy, they, they do pack a punch um, in a large area. I didn't realize they gave off such a huge area of chemicals before. Within three inches around that bouquet, everything was dying, um, and it wasn't even touching anything. So it really was giving off some pretty intense make-me-room you know, chemicals to kill stuff around it. But um, anyway, the rest of the stuff in this tank is, is doing pretty good. I hope I don't lose that pagoda, but, you know, things 
happen in the reef and um, we're trying to take stuff that's not normally thrown together even from other areas um, you know Australia or Indonesia and put them all in one tank and make them all get along and be happy and it just doesn't doesn't always you know work well but anyways this little tank's doing pretty good and I'm happy with the stuff that's going on in it other than this my mushroom issue lately but um anyways I hope this little guy will recover but I think it's too late for him I think he's he's on his way out but anyways I just wanted to talk to everybody about you know the chemical warfare that goes on with these corals and um, some of the problems and some of the ways to to you know if you can't you know crack anything off of other ways that you can kind of handle some of you know have to decide what do I want more you know or so, I usually let things duke it out pretty good but like this um Gangapura <laughs> right now he's not happy you see that red one he's beautiful but do you see he's got a long stinger out there right there that's part of him and he's reaching out for room right now he's got that you know going in the current trying to get to fight back these little green mushrooms making himself some more room because he thinks he thinks they are too close and he's sweeping it over that rock trying to you know reach anything he can saying I'm growing I'm gonna grow this way and give me some room and don't come near me so you know that that Gangapura is stretching right now trying to um, fight for some space and kill back I actually think he's making a little success on that blue mushroom it looks like it's shriveled back so it's it's really interesting to see what has the biggest sting you know who wins you know um you would think that you know the gangapores are so fragile that they wouldn't have the more powerful straight sting but it looks like that mushroom that top rim of it towards the gangapore is actually shriveled back so it must have the more powerful sting whereas you know, this the pagoda definitely was losing um, whatever that coral over here was that's almost gone. It definitely was losing. The Recordia definitely lost <laughs> to the regular mushroom. So, you know, it's it's interesting to see, you know, who's who's got the more powerful sting and who's gonna who's gonna beat out who. But um anyway, I just wanted to kinda of touch on that subject and um let you know after your coral start filling in some of the things uh you can do i i have those yellow um these these respond real well to aptasia x as well that i can trim them back and put a drip of a drop of aptasia x on the flesh that's left and burn it back because those really get out of hand easy as well so but anyways just wanted to touch on this topic and blessings and happy reefing